Gary, you can now take it away. Okay, lovely. Right, well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm sure some of you online today I know anyway, because I know a lot of you have been writing to me and saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. So it's really nice. And perhaps we haven't seen each other for a while. So this is a really good opportunity to do something creative together. Um, I'm going to get Rachel straight away. You'll see there's a camera above me. It's my phone. And that is a, a camera that comes down onto the table. But also there's a camera in front of me here. So here's the one on the table. So I've got my, um, my bits and pieces ready to go in front of me. So maybe you want to get things ready as well. Now, though I've asked you for a metal zip, I know someone just messaged me up there and just said, I couldn't get a metal zip because of lockdown. I've got a nylon zip. Well, a nylon zip is just as good. In fact, while I've been waiting to come online, I've just made this one out of a nylon zip and you'll see that it's just as effective and it just is just as nice. So if you've got a nylon zip, do not worry, you can use a nylon zip there. Today, I'm going to use this black zip because I'm going to, with lovely copper teeth, because I'm going to make one that's going to go on my jacket. So it's a long zip. In fact, it's longer than 16 inches. So we're going to cut it down. So that's quite a good, if some of you have got longer zips, you can, I'll show you how to cut it down. So this one's an open-ended zip. It could be open-ended or it could be a closed zip. I think Liz online is already trying to pick out a zip, old zip from a dress, which is fantastic. So that's so uh, sustainable and um, eco-friendly. So that's really good. So you could use old zips if you wanted to. So you'll need your zip. It might be 16 inches or could be longer. You'll need something to measure with. So you will need either a tape measure or you could have your ruler. So there's a ruler. We're going to today, we're going to work in inches. Um, generally, because of the the, uh, the demographic, a lot of people prefer inches, though unfortunately I was trained to always work in centimetres, so I'm having to learn to convert back into inches. So what I will do, I will talk in inches, but I will give you the conversion in centimetres if you prefer to work in centimetres as well. So I'll try to remember to do both. So we're going to be, we're going to be measuring in inches, but also I'll convert back to centimetres. What else do we need? So down here, right, let's start here. So you need some thread. So because I'm working on a black zip, really you should have black thread, or if you're working on the red zip, you'd be having red. Now, okay, if it's near enough to, it doesn't matter. But for my example, for you, I'm actually going to sew in white threads because you'll be able to see my stitches against the black. Now, um, obviously when it's made, you might still see the stitches, but it's just better for me for teaching you to show it in white so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. But preferably, you will all be doing it in the same colour as the zip. So we've got the thread. I've got ready a safety pin, or if you've been looking around or you've been online, you can get a little brooch clip. So there's a brooch clip that you just stitch on, or you could glue them on if you wanted to. But actually, a safety pin, a little safety pin works just as well to go behind the, um, behind the brooch. Um, you need um, a needle because we're going to be doing some hand sewing. So a fairly nice, firm needle, um, not too small, not too thin, just because you've got to go through several layers. So a quite nice, strongish needle, not too big an eye, but an eye that's easy enough to, um, to thread through. So you need a needle. You'll need a piece of felt. Now I've given you a measurement of the felt, so two inches by four. So what would that be? Let's do two inches would be five by four would be 10 centimeters. Um, and you're only going to put each, so that makes two because you've got two sides of the zip. So we're going to cut that over in half in a minute when we get move on to that. You'll need a nice selection of scissors. So I've got these pair of scissors, which are from my kitchen, which are quite nice sort of old scissors that I don't mind because I'm going to cut through the zip um, I might be cutting through plastic teeth or metal teeth or by the side of them anyway. So you wouldn't, I wouldn't advise using your very best dressmaking scissors. So a pair of scissors that are strong enough, but are not so precious that you're going to be cutting through plastic or a bit of metal teeth. So um, some nice strong scissors, obviously some smaller scissors for cutting threads. So you need those. Something to mark, because we're going to mark along the zip, you need something to mark. So because I'm working on black, I'm going to use my black chalk, uh, my white chalk pencil, but you could have a marker pen, a pencil, something like that, that you could just make a little mark as you go along, just to indicate where, how we're going to be uh, manipulating this zip. 
the other thing you can have, and this optional, is a lighter. Not because we're all going to buy 20 Benson uh, cigarettes and have a good smoke up. Not at all. We're going to use the zip to seal. Um, they're going to use the lighter to seal the zip. And it's actually quite good when you are shortening zips at any time, you'll find that the bottom will fray. And it's a really good way of actually sealing the zip just with the flame of the lighter. Now, that is optional, and I will do it. If you haven't got a lighter to hand, do not worry because um, it's just a little thing that I want to show you as a little sort of a trick that I um, that you can use later. OK, I think we've got everything. So um, hopefully you've assembled those things near and around you. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to shorten our zip or um, undo our zip to start with. So if we've got so we've got this lovely black zip, I'm going to take it apart. So it might be that it's not an open-ended zip at all, and you might need to cut it across to open it, to actually get it apart, because you need two sections to the zip. So you, this zip here is an open-ended zip, and the little runner is there, the little slider is there, and um, I've taken that apart. But it might be that it's closed. If it's closed, cut it along at the bottom, so that the zip, when you undo it will come completely apart and the little zip runner comes off at that point for us that uh, have got a closed zip like this we're going to measure from the stopper end here and we're going to measure 16 inches which is about 40 41 centimeters and then we're going to cut it so i'm going to measure and i'm going to take my white pencil and I'm going to measure from the stopper end and I'm going to measure 16 inches and I'm going to make a little mark there, just a little with my white pencil chalk so I know that I've got 16 inches. Now, some of you might have an, a zip that's already 16 inches, so you don't really have to do much at all to it. What I would suggest is there may be at the top of your zip, let me just bring this red one over, there may be like a little um, a plastic stopper here. I would say cut that stopper off. So you're going to cut across and just cut that stopper off so that you can actually get, so if I take this stopper off here, I can get that little zip runner off. I don't need that. I can put that somewhere else. In fact, I say I don't need that. I have seen these little stoppers made into lovely little stud earrings you get the little earring find at the, that you could just glue on and they make lovely little stud earrings. So if you've got two, see if you can look online for little earring um, uh, sort of backs and then you can just glue them on and they look really good and quirky for earrings. Anyway, let's get back to the black zip. So the black zip I've marked 16 inches and I'm gonna use my nice strong kitchen scissors and I'm gonna just cut all the way through and I'm going to discard the little bit that I don't need over there to the top of the up there. Now I can take this bit of zip up. I've got a nice nice brass zipper end there that could become something later on. So don't throw them away. They're useful for something. All right. Now I'm going to use my little um, lighter. So I'm going to just seal with my lighter edge just the edge there. So I don't want to catch it alight. And while I've heated it up, I'm not going to touch it with my fingers. But now that, because it is a nylon zip, it will just stay. It will just be stuck there. So it'd just be nice. It won't fray anymore. Down this end here, where there's the stopper, I'm going to cut that stopper off because it's quite big and bulky and it won't really work with um, the, the design. So I'm going to just take that off and seal that end. So if you've got, if you've ended up with the stopper or some sort of stopper at that end, you're better off cut it off because you don't really need that because it'd just be too bulky and it'd get in the way. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to just give you a minute or two while you all just prepare your zip. If you've done that, you could be threading up a needle and thread. So I'm going to, while you all prepare that, I'm gonna prepare my needle and thread while you all get ready. So I'm just going to thread up my needle and thread, double thread and get that ready. So I'm ready to start sewing. Gary, is it both ends that you use the lighter on? 
I did. Yes, I did. I mean, it doesn't necessarily the, the end that you're going to perhaps start off with. It doesn't necessarily matter. But, you know, it's just good practice just to seal them and um, to get it so it doesn't fray anymore. That'd be fine. And that works on a cotton zip as well, does it? If it was a cotton zip, it won't seal. It won't seal closed. So you um, if it's a cotton zip, I would just um, what I would do is almost like over sew the ferry end, just some little stitches on the end. The sealing with the lighter really only works with the nylon zips. OK, thanks. All right. All right, so hopefully, why don't we all put our thumbs up and say we're ready to go. We've, we've cut our zips and we're ready to go. So when you've all got thumbs up, Rachel will say, looks like most people are ready to go. Is that okay, Rachel? Yes, let me have a look at the gallery. So if we've got thumbs up. Lots of thumbs up there. Lots of thumbs up. Is everybody having a good time so far? <laughs> 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 Good. We, we, haven't got it wrong. we haven't got it wrong yet. That's brilliant. Right. That's okay. cool. Have I got That's double cool. thread there in my needle, Gary? Should that be double yeah. thread and knotted? Yes, please. If yeah. you want to get that far, that's great. Thank you. Oh, am I a little? <laughs> Definitely a thumbs up here then. <laughs> all right. So, Rachel, do you think we're all ready to move on to the next stage? Then? I think we're all ready. Okay, right. So, the next stage is now we've got our length of zip here. You pick up your marker pen, so it could be a pen, pencil, or a piece of chalk, or a wipe, like I'm using a chalk pencil. And we've got to mark increments along this zip. So we've got to make little marks. Thinking that up this end, by my left hand, is the beginning. What I'd like you to mark, you can use a ruler or the tape measure, you're going to mark five increments of two and a half inches. So I'll do that, we'll do this together. So two and a half inches, what is that? Does anyone know? It's about six and a half, well, let's call it six centimetres if you're working in centimetres, but we're going to work in inches and you're going to work, let me just put, in fact, I'm going to put the zip up that way with the teeth at the top and I'm going to mark two and a half, make a little mark with my pencil, so I can see. Then I'm going to mark again, two and a half. And mark again, two and a half. Mark again, two and a half. And last time, then two and a half. Hopefully you can all see that. I'm gonna just go over it again so you can just see where I've marked along that line like that. When we get to this far end, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a cross just somewhere in there, little tiny little cross, nothing that's gonna really, I mean, it's, I'm probably doing it a little bit bigger so that you can all see it, but you could put a tiny little cross in the corner down here if you want. So we've got, what I've done is I've measured two and a half or six centimetres, then I've measured again and made a mark, measured again, made a mark, made a mark, made a mark, done that five times. And then this little end here, I've put a little cross and that will become apparent in a minute. Gary? Yes? What's the size of felt that we have to cut? So that's the next stage. So oh, we have okay. a piece of felt and I will um, have you as everyone, I'll tell you what we do. We'll wait for everyone to finish marking their zip and then I'm going to, I've got the felt in front of me and we I'll tell you all the measurements and everything to cut that next. I'm 
<laughs> if we've all measured, if we put our thumbs up to say, yeah, we're all done. Does that look good, Rachel? Let's have a little looky. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up. We've thumbs all marked up, our zip. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yes, I can't see the people with cameras off, but I think that you can put little thumbs up on your... Oh, they're coming. Little yellow thumbs up are coming. <laughs> hey, they know, they know their Zoom. <laughs> they know their Zoom, yes. <laughs> That's cool. Very okay. good. All right. So let's move on to the felt then. So um, I'm using this little bit of black felt, but you might have a little bit of red felt. Now, the clue's in this one because it is two inches by two inches square and uh, this one is actually I've measured this two by four because you can make you see you're going to make two so if I fold that in half I've then got a two by two square so two inch by two inch let's go back that's five centimeters by five centimeters for our metric people like that so you're going to just first of all going to just cut a little square two by two Okay, so when you've cut your little square, the next thing you've got to do is pick up your sharp little scissors and you've got to make this square into a circle. Now, this is the challenge. So really, basically, you can cut the corners off to start with. So if you just cut the corners off like that, it becomes almost like a 50 pence piece. And then you can then just round that off again. So you've got a little circle. And really, this is going to be your little base. This is the base that you do your stitching on. So it's quite nice to get that nice and neat. We can trim it down again later once we've finished the brooch. So if it hangs over the edge, we can always trim it up. So it's not that precious. And felt's really nice because it doesn't fray, but you could use anything as a fabric base for this. And then just maybe if it wasn't felt and it was fraying, you could just neaten up the end with some little stitches around it later on. But it's just a base to build your brooch on. So that's all you need. And if you haven't threaded your needle and cotton, you can thread your needle and cotton like just, we just mentioned, I've done it double. It's just a little bit stronger. I put a knot in the end because then we can then just easily get it attached to get started. Can I just check as well, uh, Catherine, um, you've got your little hand in your uh, corner. That might've been to say that you were ready, but sometimes the hand up means that you need help. Do you need help with anything, Catherine, or are you okay? You can put it in the chat box to a direct message to me if you want, or you can unmute yourself. We'll see. Just checking. Okay. Like right. get, we, we, we get nobody left behind here on no, this show, Gary. No. Okay, right. So I think we're probably I'll be at a stage now where we can actually start creating the 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 um the brooch. So we're going to start creating these petals to start with. So I think what I'll do is I'll get you to watch me. I'll do the first one and then we'll all do that together and we'll all put our thumbs up and then I'll show you how you then work round each petal. So first of all, what I want you to do with your needle and thread, I just want you to attach with a couple of little stitches just in the center of this disc of felt. And I just want you to make sure that you've anchored your thread in the middle there. So I've just anchored it, I've just gone, I had the knot, but I went through a couple of times, just so there's nothing more frustrating as you start sewing and the whole thing starts to pull through and you have to start again. So we've just anchored the stitch in the center of the piece of felt. Now, once you've done that, what I want you to do is I want you to pick up the end with the teeth at the top, the end that hasn't got the cross on, and I want you to lay that on here, onto the middle. I want you to lay it onto me. What I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to I'm going to run my stitches through so I've come out at the back because that just get it gets the thread out of the way. So I'm going to lay that on the top like that, and I'm holding it with my thumb and finger, and then I'm going to come through, and I'm going to just anchor the end of that zip 
with a couple of just hand stitches. I'm just gonna anchor the stitches through like that. Hopefully not getting it too knotted up. So hopefully you can see that on camera that that is now anchored in the center there. So I'm gonna get you all to do that. I'm gonna leave that down there for the minute. I want you all to do that. And I want you to do thumbs up. So we've anchored it all on and then I'll move on to the next stage. We'll have a little looky, Gary. Have a little looky. We'll have a little looky. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Oh, we've got Lovely. three thumbs in Elaine Workman's window. How have we done that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So then next, once you've anchored it, the, I've got the stitches that have come out the back. I've got the threads coming out the back. Now, that does is quite important because what I found by making these, if you finish off through the front, it tends to, the thread tends to get caught up in the zip teeth. So come out at the back for the time being. You can always put your needle and thread down because you might need both hands. So I'm holding the zip in my thumb and forefinger. And then I'm going to move the zip around to create a curve like that. And where that, where the next mark is, the next where I marked with the, um, with the white pe um, pencil, I'm going to put that mark over the top of my stitch. Can you see that? So I'm going to just put that over the stop stitch. So what I did was I took it in my right hand I've put my needle and thread down. I've put my thumb and finger almost near to where that mark was, the first mark that I've made, and I've twisted it round and I've bring it and I've brought it back on top of the stitch. And I'm going to hold it with my forefinger and thumb. Then with my thread, I'm going to come through and I'm going to do another couple of stitches to anchor that through. So I'm going to go through backwards and forwards. Twice, because that's like nice and strong enough, like that. And you can see that you've got the teeth on the top and you've got a nice little like loop that's come all the way round. And then I'm going to move it this way. So I'm going to put the needle and thread down, remembering to keep the needle and thread out the back so it's not all going to get knotted up. And then I'm going to put my finger and thumb back on the next mark and I'm going to loop that round almost like in a, can you see, like a figure of eight. And I put that mark on top of the, the stitch that I've got there underneath. And I'm going to then come through. And I'm going to stitch again twice. Okay, I'm gonna put that down for a minute. I'm gonna let you all catch up. Thumbs up. Harry, are we that. directly opposite now? We're, we're going you are. Different... Yeah, thank Can you. you. See that? It's almost like directly opposite. It's like a figure of eight. Oh, so if I hold that up. Yeah, you I'll did say that. Thank you very I'll much. I'll hold that so you can all see. When you've all got that far, just thumbs up. So I know that you've got the idea because once you've picked up the practice of just wrapping it round one on top of the other, the rest of the petals become quite easy. <clears throat> Hang on, let's have oh. a look, Gary. They should be okay, are they? Yep. Seeing yeah. loads of thumbs up. Everybody's okay, lovely. So, you know, you're going to get this really easy. So I'm going to put my needle and thread down again. And then the next time I'm going to, you guessed it, I'm going to manipulate this one around. This time it's round the other side. So it's not a figure of eight. It's coming around the other way like that. And I'm going to put the little line on top of the stitch and I'm going to anchor that. Two stitches all the way through. By this point, you're going through quite a lot of layers. So do be careful with fingers and thumbs and um, who's pricked themselves so far. So just be careful. All right, so I've done that. So that's gonna go through. You see that slightly off line there. Then needle and thread down, 
pick up the next one and manipulate the zip around again. So that's your fourth, almost at your fourth petal over in this corner. I'm making sure that it's lined up so that your little mark you made is lined up with the stitches underneath again. Needle and thread through, but do take care because you've got quite a lot of layers now to go through. One, two zips, two stitches, not two zips. We've got two zips, but we've got two stitches running through. There we go. Needle and thread down. And then lastly, we've got the last mark, the last little mark that you made. And you're just gonna bring that one round on top. And you're gonna lay it on top and you're going to secure that. And you should be left with then, once I stitch that through twice. There we go. And then we should be at that stage like that. So you should have, and I'll leave that like that for the minute so that you can see and we're going to stop. We're not going to do any. We're not doing any more petals. Once we've done the, we've done the five petals. We're nearly there. We're nearly. I'd say we're nearly over halfway there now. <laughs> it does get quite tough. But the more layers you get, it gets quite tough to put the needle through the center. So do be careful as you're sewing through. And that's why it's probably best to have quite a nice sort of thick, sort of strong needle to do this practice with, so do that. If everyone's happy, put your thumbs up at this stage. We're nearly there, got that done. Yep. Yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah. Okay. So, why you suggest, and just is just through, I actually now just secure at the back because we're going to then just re, re knot our thread. So, at this point, you might have run out of thread. You might need some more thread. So, you can always reload your needle. So, I'm going to just knot the back. I've just over sewed at the back a couple of times, take the thread off. And you can always just get yourself a little bit more thread, just in case if you've not got enough, it's always best just to tie up at the back and then get some more. So I'm just going to do that. Sorry. Yes. You know, when you're laying the zip thing on top each time, I think I've got myself in a bit of a muddle. On which, which side down this, can you see on mine there? Can you see who's- right, Rachel will bring yours up. Rachel, if you bring the- Sally Wilson. I will, hang on Sally. Could you just give me a wet, can you give me a wave? A big wave, I've got you Sally. Okay, yeah. let's bring you into um, the spotlight. There you go. I've got in a bit of a pickle. Oh Sally, right, what's happened then? Show me on camera. Right, I think I have, um, twisted that the wrong way on the no. last one no i think you're fine if you then i pulled that is that right it doesn't look right uh, the first two were okay well first three were okay and now it's sort of gone no a bit. no that is right you're on your fourth petal and then you've got your fifth petal which will come out below that i think but i think i should have done on that third petal well maybe not maybe i no. should have not twisted it the wrong way, this this last one, no? No, you've twisted that, that looks so... Oh, hang on, have you undone, show me again. Right, let me just tighten up, because I was just gonna take it out like that, that last petal, which is that way. I think I've done it the wrong way, haven't I? Um, it it up, because I'm just looking the other ones here, that isn't the same as those, can you see? This last one, I've done something. Yes, oh. what you've done is you've gone towards your right, go left. So undo it and move it left around. So come towards your left hand and around and that should do it. The reason I did the other way, Gary, because I ended up marking the other way to you. Oh, you know, 
I ended up marking my teeth the wrong way around. So I think I've gotten a bit of a pickle doing no, that. No. So you need to just move it. Instead of coming round, I think you've probably come round to the right. Go left. Go over left and round. So now move it the, the other, other way. way. Yes, that's it. Right, I'm going to have to cut that cotton now. I've got to bugger, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you okay right. though now, Sally? Yes, thank you. Sorry Brilliant. about that. No, that's okay, sorry, you'll that, pick it that's up. That's what we do here on a Crafty Monkeys class is we always, um, you know, get you to show us and then we can help you. That's the idea. Yes. Um, thank you, it. hopefully. I do, I do like your red wall and your Hockney painting, by the way. So I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. I want to come and stay. <laughs> Very colourful, isn't it? <laughs> thank you. Right, okay, so. Now, Gary, before we move on, we've had a yeah. question from Anne-Marie as well. And she has yeah. said, can she ask, please, if you can hold the front and side of a petal close to the camera? And I can, right, you. let's do that. that let's do that, okay. So let's bring up to the camera. So can you see that? Is that come into view? Yeah. So there's the front and there's the side. Like that. Does that help you? Hopefully so. That's Hopefully. Certainly, you certainly have shown it to the camera. <laughs> Right, so um, what we've got to do now is we're going to do the centre. So Rachel, I'll tell you what, come back on camera and just show them your, the centre of your, the brooch that you've got, the sample that you have. Okay. Start my video. Could I say something a minute, Gary? Yes. yes. Um, mine, I, I, I've gone a bit wrong, actually. Okay, let's have a look then. Let's have a look. Who is talking at me, please? Jane, Jane. All right, Jane, let's bring you so, in two of you. Gary. Oh, Jane. Hello, Jane. Yeah, How are hi, you? Gary. <laughs> I don't know whether it's because I'm left handed, but yes. I was going completely haywire on this. Yeah. But my, um, your end bit, your zip's going down that side, isn't that? Yes, yeah, so you've, got, you've got one more twist, haven't you, there? Have you got five petals? No, I've got four. So you've got one more twist to do. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Does that help? So, so, so like that? You've got one more twist and then you're going to, yeah. So you've got one more and then you're going to, cur we're going to curl up the rest, that little bit that's left into the middle okay. to make the center. So that's right, is it? Well, it's actually what you've got instead You've almost got it the other way around. Like you've got, like, can you, if you look at mine, my petals open up this way, where yours tend to be looking with, if you imagine the zip on is the teeth on yeah. that side, like that. I so, think it's because I'm left-handed. Do you know, it really, it could make a difference. It really could. So you need to, rather than, which way was I going? I was going sort of um, left to right, left to right. You might want to go right to left. Yeah. when you twist it round but we've okay. got you've got you've got the second half of the zip so you'll be able to do the your next one and try it in the other direction okay okay all right I've all done right the, yeah i've done the fifth one now thank you but it's still it's just going to be slightly different shape but you've still got a flower shape there and then you can put the we can put the center in and then the next one you can think right i'm going to go instead of my natural way to twist the zip around i'm going to go unnatural and go back the other way and see what shape i get when i twist the zip around that way do you uh, want me to show mine gary yes please can they just see the center so we're going to what we're going to create now is the center so there you are so it's just the center of that zip and we're going to now do that so that gives you a clue what we've got to do is we've got to curl up what's left of that little bit of zip so i'm going to show you how to do that next lovely so you, you do you do five petals to the cross yes five petals that would look very nice with my dress i might actually have to keep this now gary <laughs> well i think i might have lost it i think i've you've got two haven't you i think i've lost both of them i think you might have done <laughs> I think you might just have lost them. <laughs> they were actually, I like, because they work quite well as a pair, just clustered together. Yeah, they do. You know, they, they do work quite nice. And you could wear them on your garment, but you could wear them on a hat or anything like that. So, it, you know, 
It'll be fine. In your hair. Yay! Put them on the side. A clip. <laughs> Wonderful. <Justice>. Right. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> Okay, so now, so what we've got to do is we've got to now curl up this end. That's why I put an X on there, because that isn't part of the petal. This is the centre. Now, I've asked you to um, really just um, finish off at the back for now, because we're going to, rather than finishing off through the back, we're going to be working from the front. We're going to be working on the top. Now, take care, because I know that as we're sewing from the top, it can get, the thread can get caught around the teeth. So hopefully we won't have too many times getting caught up. What you need to do now is you're going to anchor. Um, no, what you're going to do first is you're going to start curling up that end of that zip. Now, you've got to be quite firm with it. You're not going to let it get away from you because it will, because it will have a mind of its own. It's got most of them are metal teeth zip. Even the, the nylon one will want to get away from you. So curl it around a couple of times and then just anchor that to stop that going anywhere because it is a bit of a naughty thing. It will just like, oh, I'm going to unfurl now. Or I'm going to get caught up in the teeth. So you want to just anchor that with some stitches at the bottom there just to hold that in place. So I've just anchored that down in there like that. And then I'm going to put my needle and thread down and I'm going to carry on curling round. So I'm going to carry on just rolling that up a bit like a Swiss roll really to near enough. So I've nearly got it inside of the flower. So I'm going to hold it tight and again I'm going to then just anchor that end with some stitches because it has got a mind of its own and it will try to unfurl. We won't, we don't really want to do that. We want it to stay where we want it to stay. So I'm going to put some stitches through again just to hold it down. And Gary, Lisa um, put into the chat that the two ladies who were showing their zips, Lisa yes. said they are making the top side the bottom side where they stitch if it was fabric they would be sewing the right side down yes does that make yes. sense yes it would Good so it's the right she's side she's down. very clever <laughs> and Anne marie said she's left-handed and hers looks the same as yours jane right so it's yeah. definitely the left-handed left -handed so you need thing. to go the other direction mm -hmm. to create mm -hmm. that that loop and then rosemary said the zip teeth should be on the outside of the petal and the fabric in the middle yes yes okay so as you see i've started off my little swiss roll i've started rolling and i've anchored here so i've got this far so trying to keep the thread not getting caught up in the teeth you can just carry on and roll that until it rolls up into the center of the flower like so like that now I'm holding it down with my thumb because it will spring out like a coil. So once you've got that, you've got the thread here at the side. Now what you've got to do is you've got to carefully just sew down through the side, through to the back, just to hold that in place. Just taking care that it doesn't get caught up on the teeth, which it will tend to do because it's naughty like that and it'll want to get caught up into the teeth. So you're just going to anchor it with some stitches coming through. Do be careful because you're coming through quite a lot of fabric now to get that through. Hold that down with your thumb. Hold the centre down tight with your thumb until you've got some nice stitches in there just to hold it. And then when you've done that, then you can then just come through to the back. And if you've got thread left, don't cut it off at this stage because we can use that thread to help put the, uh, the fastening on at the back. But we should all get through to this stage of the zip like that. Making sure that we've really stitched that center down because we don't want it popping out. I've bent my needle. Oh. <laughs> 
you really are putting some force into it. So yeah, it's quite cool. <laughs> Take care, everybody. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've still got, we're 10 minutes and we're nearly there. Good. If we've got a couple of minutes at the end, I will just go through the whole procedure again for you so that you can spend the rest of Saturday afternoon making lots of brooches and you'll be practiced at any of them. So it'd be good. How are we all doing? Have we all got that far? So when you have, Put your thumbs up so when you're ready to then we're going to be attaching the pin or the little brooch clip depending on what you've got then we can all get ready to that stage there so i would say get your pin in place make sure you've got enough thread left to stitch the pin on and you'll need a little pair of scissors as well by the side of you too so i love it all these little zippy corsages being made so yes. Everybody sat there, mate. They are. I'll tell you something though, I mean, I was looking at that black one there. And, um, you know, I think for like, you know, kind of really trendy young men, you know, who were wearing a kind of suit and something, you know, yeah. you know, something like that. I think that would look really cool, actually. Well, you know, Rachel, when I went, I went down, um, uh, I actually. Like you, ran Gary, up. you're a trendy young man. <laughs> 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 I, I, chose this one particularly because I just thought you know I in fact the ones that you've got I happily wear with I've got a lovely tweed jacket and I've got a red hanky in my pocket and I'd happily wear one of those red ones on my lapel and then I thought when I went to have a look at what I could get um, I thought no this time I think I'll go for black I really like these sort of brassy copper teeth and I thought gosh that'd really look nice I'd probably get more use out of a, a black one me, mm. myself as a guy as a corsage or as a, uh, you know, a lapel buttonhole type thing. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, they, I've seen them in, in the shops, like for guys, you know, they do like a sort of um, a felty type buttonhole to put onto your jackets. But I just think these are really, really quite nice. So yeah, I'll be proudly wearing mine. Um, not the red one. You won't be wearing the red one because you're not getting it back. I'm not getting it back. <laughs> See, have you not realised, Gary, that what I'm doing is asking you to teach classes of things that I want, because then you yeah. send me the sample and then like the reindeer, you know, these I, things don't come back. I know your game. I've got you clocked now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll be saying to you, do you know, Gary, I think the next class we should do is a little, little sort of black dress, kind of Audrey yes. Hepburn style. Let's make the little black dress. <laughs> I just <laughs> send you my measurements in case you want to knock up a sample. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, um, I used to, you know, when I did do a lot of fashion design and making like the samples up, I mean, I did have a quite a, a, a big sort of female following. That female following wasn't necessarily buying any of my clothes. They were just <laughs> hanging out in case there was an odd sample going <laughs> exactly. out the door. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you do, I mean, myself as being, you know, someone that's always making and coming up with ideas and sampling up, I do come up with like, I, in fact, I'm looking across the room and there's some two great big boxes just full of samples and repeats of things that I've done while I've been doing it online. So there is points in the year where I do have to have some sort of like a sale of bits. You know, I have like an exhibition of some of my work and then I usually sell off some bits then. So yeah, so there you go. I, like yourself, you um, you might get a few freebies your way. <laughs> <laughs> I, anything is gratefully accepted. Anything. Okay, like right. I think, hopefully, we're all, are we all thumbs up for putting on the little pin at the back? Are we all thumbs up for that? How are we managed? Okay. Let's have a little looky. Yep, everybody yeah. is thumbing. Oh, Wendy. Hang on, people. Let's just have a look at Wendy's. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, no. That's lovely, Wendy. And that's using a nylon zip which is really quite delicate, isn't it? It isn't was. It's, nice? I've had to cut down the, um, the felt square because the felt square was far too big for it. Ah, well, that's my next stage. So I'm just going to tell <laughs> everyone to do that. So we're going we're gonna to just trim the back and then we're ready to put the pin on. But do you know that, do you know, if you could get hold of more yellow zips, what lovely Easter presents they would make. Yeah, I know, that's, that's what I was thinking. Mm. <laughs> it looks like a daffodil. I'm really pleased with it. It, it does, does look, look like a daffodil. Yeah. 
But and, nice. you know, that would look lovely as a brooch on a dress, wouldn't it? And you could even, yeah. if you wanted to make it into a daffodil, you could even put some sort of like little green thread with it or something, you know, as a yeah. sort of stem. It'd be lovely. The little, actually, what you could do, that the last bit at the end, which was with, with the X, so you know that that's the last bit. So say we've got, say with this red zip here, if I put it in front of me, that last bit where we had, which is the X, which curls up, if you just got some nail varnish in like an orange color and you just painted the nail varnish on the plastic teeth at the end and then rolled it up, then you'd have one of those daffodils, which is like yellow petals and the orange center, wouldn't you? Mm, yes. Okay. There you go. Lovely. So you get more than you get more than just doing this. You get even get design advice as well. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right. Let's turn, so we're going to turn over, and as we've just talked about, you know, this circle, I don't know if you can quite see that, is probably slightly bigger than what you need. So what you need to do now, now you've finished using that, you can trim this circle down. Don't cut through any of the petals, but you can trim this circle right the way down. So it's just a little disc on the back. Take care not to cut away your thread or cut through your thread. But you can just make that slightly smaller so that it's not protruding the petals. So you just trim away and make that a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah, someone called um, Tea Glass. I think maybe that's Teresa. Um, not yeah. sure. I said it would be good for St. David's Day, that little yellow one as well. Wouldn't it? That'd be lovely. And you could even like, they're small enough. I mean, I know I sent you some in a little box in the post and they're small enough, you know, just to do as a little, um, yeah. probably get it in a little padded envelope, actually, if you just sent one, you could send them to people. If we're still, you know, not really moving around by the time we get into the spring, why don't you make some nice little yellow ones or some even ones out of, you know, the zips that you've got at home and send one to a friend. I think that'd be really nice. I mean, you could, if you haven't got a 16 inch zip, what you could do is you could be quite clever and join two shorter zips together. Because if you think you're just making them into the petal shapes so that you could pick up another one, join it here and then make that as the petal shape. Whoops, bringing it around this way. You can make that into the petal shape like that with the join underneath. No one would know that it's two zips. So you could still do that you don't necessarily have to have, start off with a 16 inch zip. You could use up lots of shorter zips as long as you make the joins in the center where the flower is. So now you could do that. Okay, so we like cut down the base. Now you put your clip on, so your safety pin. What I would do is just check which bit of the safety pin opens because the bit you want to sew on the back isn't the bit that opens. It's the bit that is like static here. So I'm just going to check that it's, okay there and I'm just going to put some stitches to start off with around just to hold that in place you can then close once you've got it sort of anchored sort of secured you can then close your your safety pin back up just for safety reasons so you're not pricking yourself so that can get closed back up and then what I want you to do is you're just going to if I show that to camera you're just going to just nice little stitches you're going to stitch that side of the safety pin or the if you're using a brooch clip or something like that just one side of it and you're going to just anchor that with some stitches just along some nice neat stitches so you're just going to finish that as i said i've done white stitches you would do your um, the color that you're using to match the color of the zip. But I think when I'm using white stitches, you can see where my stitches are going. So I'm not doing the neatest of stitches because I'm sort of rushing through this, but I'll take your time and make sure you do plenty of strong stitches because obviously the brooch is gonna be hanging from this and you don't want it suddenly like pinging off or coming away. So you're just gonna put some nice stitches through that belt and then just not off your, your thread, do a couple of knots again to make sure that it's nice and, and there we are, all ready to go. Perfect. Done. Okay. 
let's have a look how everybody's getting on. How is everyone doing? Stitching and sewing. Julie, have you got something to show us, my lovely? Oh, you've got a yellow one as well. I love it. Let's have a look at the yellow. Oh, oh that's nice. So pretty. Yes. Do you know what I really like is the prettiness of the kind of colour and the and the fabric and then that zip, which makes it really grungy. Yes. I like it. It's quite, yes, it does, doesn't it? It makes it really quite nice and sort of industrial in a way, really. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. That's lovely. Thank you. Anybody else like to show us their little uh, zippy corsage? Jill, Jill Hathaway. Let's have a look at Jill. Oh, look, that green will be perfect for my dress. Now, I'll send you my dress, Jill, and then you can... <laughs> <laughs> that is lovely. What a lovely colour. That's beautiful. That is really nice. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you unmute yourself, Jill? Can you press the button? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is lovely. Thank you. It's a little smaller one because I only had a 14 inch zip, so it's a little oh, it's a, yeah. a bit But it's too. worked quite it's well. Cute. So, um, Julie, did you, um, is it Jill? It's Jill. Jill, yeah. yeah. Jill, did you um, make the petal size smaller then? Or did yeah, you keep I, the same? No, did I did. You? Two and a quarter inch. Two and a quarter to accommodate that you won't have enough yeah. left at the end. That's a yeah. really good idea. So you could, again, like you say, you had 14, just make those increments slightly smaller and then you'll still be able to make the petals and you'll still have enough to then do the little, um, the centre of it afterwards. So that's, yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Good. Are you pleased with that, Jill? You look pleased. I am. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, so cute. They're, they are lovely as, um, as gifts, aren't they? As I know. <laughs> I'm putting mine on. <laughs> But yeah, Gary, if you own. Gary, if you wouldn't mind just looking at that green, please, because I would I'd like uh, <laughs> <laughs> just getting my order in. <laughs> right now we've got a lady called iPad, which is a very unusually christened name, uh, but we'll uh, we'll give it a go. So iPad, let's come to you. iPad. Hello, iPad. Hello, iPad. <laughs> oh, iPad, I love it. That's really nice. So you did you do a black one with silver teeth? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Really yeah. good. What is your name, my lovely? It's Pauline. Hello, yeah. Pauline. Oh, wow. That, actually, with the silver teeth, is quite sort of like party. It could go quite well with a little black dress, couldn't it? Well, I was thinking of my granddaughter, yeah. So Yeah. She was Very 16 nice. yesterday, so... Oh, 16. right. 16. Uh, ah. 16 oh. yesterday, I know, scary. Yeah. To <laughs> so be 16 again. Wow. No. I <laughs> know. Oh, <laughs> No. <laughs> only I only be 16 again if I can take all the knowledge that I know in my 50 blah, 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 um with me. If I can take that all back with me, my God, I'd be such a force to reckon with. There'd be no stopping me there. Oh, would be. That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Pauline. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. If you want to unmute yourself. Oh, there we are. Name. Love that. Uh, yeah, nice. yeah. Beautiful. Oh, black and silver again. Yeah. Yeah, looks Classic, good, doesn't it? it? Mm. And have you got a home for that? Do you know where it's going to go? Um, very probably daughter. Right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Nice little present. They are. Do you know, it's just lovely at this time, you know, when perhaps we're not seeing so much of each other or just saying, you know, we're thinking of you or we really care. Just send something. Send a little gift. Yeah. Anything like well, they'll, that. They'll, they'll be going in sets. Daughter, daughter-in-law, granddaughters. Yeah. They'll all get different coloured ones, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Lovely. Okay. Judy. That's lovely, that lovely. pink one. <laughs> a pink one to match your pink jumper. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's lovely. Uh -huh. Oh, do you know... I love pink. My, it was my grandmother's favourite colour, pink. Everything had to be pink. And it uh, just reminds me, if I see that, especially that, that shade of pink, that reminds me of my grandmother, my nan. So, yes, lovely. Lovely pink. She would have loved that. It's my winter jumper. Oh, no. Oh. I didn't you know, see that at you first. Need to, you need to put the zippy onto the penguin, and then he's wearing a little brooch himself. Oh, yes. How fabulous he is. <laughs> That's oh. lovely. <laughs> that is nice. So thank much. you, Judy. Thank you. Okay. Let's, let's, thank you, darling. Let's go to Karen. Oh, now with oh, the gold. Nice. Karen, that's nice. So you you got the similar zip to me, didn't you? Yeah. Black and cross. Where are you gonna are you gonna wear that or is that a gift for somebody? Oh, that goes right here. Oh <laughs> yes. Nice. Like mine. Then, yes. I think whoever I think whoever comments on it can get one in future. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. That's very true. Brilliant. Oh, good. Thank you so well, much, Karen. Thank, thank you, Karen. Thanks. 
And then welcome to Lisa Malone. Lisa Malone. Hello, Lisa. Lisa. Hello. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, purple. It's like a light. Is that a limey green on there as well? Uh, yellow. Oh, yeah. yellow. And yellow. the other half of the zip pink. Wow. And green. Oh. Look at that. Do you know, I've not seen a zip like that. That's amazing. Where'd you get that from? I think the website was called Sewing Story. Or... Right. Yeah. But Brilliant. I've got a selection and they like, there's pink ones with green teeth and, but each half's a different colour. Yes. Wonderful. That's when I bought them, I didn't think I'd be making flowers out of them. But they lend <laughs> no, themselves no, no, quite no. well to it. <laughs> Fabulous. Good. Thank you, Lisa, as always, right. one of our regular monkeys. <laughs> uh, we've got Alan down here as well. Let's have a look at Alan. Alan, where is she? There she is. Now, this one's trouble, Rachel. Watch her. Is she? Is she a troublemaker? Watch her. Rachel, <laughs> um, Alan, have you smeared Vaseline on the screen? Because I really can't, can't see you. What are you doing in there? <laughs> it's that soft focus, you know. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my what? God. It's got a I bit like of Right. What's the edge of the zip? What's you've got on there? Is it a dark one? It's black, is it? No, it's... Hold on, let me see if I can get it up a bit better. I think it's, it's a like... cream, cream yeah. metal. Ah, yeah. cream and metal. That's nice. Yeah, I like, you know, it actually defines the edge of it as well, doesn't it? Lovely. Yeah, yeah Wonderful. I just needed... So it needed to be a bit more um, prudent with me folding, I think, but yeah. uh, it's okay. Next, well, you've got next one will be fine. The next one. So you've still got the other half. So be a bit more, <laughs> take a bit more time, a bit more neater, hold it tightly while you're sewing it, and you'll get much more better shaped petals then, won't you? Yes. Brilliant. Did you, have you enjoyed, <laughs> have you enjoyed, I haven't seen you for so long, or apart from bumping into you in Lidl's, but... Um, I haven't seen you at a class for so long. Have you enjoyed this? Have you? Very much, thank you. Good, good. good. I'm pleased. Yeah. It's nice to see your face. Uh, Jane's got a question. Hello, Jane. Jane. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely need more practice, Gary. <laughs> Jane. Yeah, Let's look, get Jane up I, did, I, did, I did too, and they're both wrong. Oh, yeah, they're they? both nice. I love well, the one on the right. That's lovely. Let's, what, this, um, this uh, one, this, this yeah. is my second one which I did wrong, but if you turn it to the reverse, like that's how it should be, isn't that? Oh, so that's my right. second, that's my second <laughs> effort, Gary, which is worse than my first. It's different, Jane, that's different. That's very yeah, creative. Yeah, it is. Now, I, don't, I don't think it's going to catch on though. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, if you turn right. it around, that's the reverse, right? That's so it, which, on the reverse. It, but... Yes. Ah. I don't know now, what how... I've done, but that's... Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, I was just going to quickly... What I'll quickly do, I'm just going to get Rachel to come back on the desk. I'm just going to quickly run it, just talk to everyone again, and I will try that. Right, so if we've got the zip, we started off with a zip, we went two and a half, 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 five times. Then yeah. we put an X at the end. Then we had a little disc of, of um, belt, and we anchored, and then I held it in my left hand and I moved the zip around, curved it around to my right. And then I anchored that. Then I curved it around that way. So I've got it going that way. So I curved it around to my right. Now, if I'm left-handed, let me see if I can do it. So I then maybe do I, gosh. It's really tricky. Yes, it is, isn't it? Because, yeah, because you need to, yes. It's really, <laughs> really tricky. Um, unless, right, unless you work from underneath. So if you look at holding it like underneath in your left hand and then curving it round, because that's why it's actually worked the other way because you've worked upside down. So maybe yeah. if you anchor it, hold it in your left hand from, um, you know, underneath and then turn it round underneath to get it to work. No, but that's not working. Oh. I've got to think this. I've got to now think this through. <laughs> <laughs> For left-handed people, we did have some left-handed people in the group who managed to do it, though. So we need to yeah. see their action, how they did it, to get it to work for them. Well, I can copy because I've got the bat. I know what it should look like. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to practice. Well done. Oh, it was fun. It was a fun hour. 
So when you were saying about people being left-handed and then people be not being able to do it that way around, I was having a practice the other way around and I don't know whether you I don't know whether I can do it on this because I've only got like the one camera and I haven't got the right kind of bit of felt but if you hold it with the zipper the teeth of the zipper to the outside and then bring it round with your right hand that would be the way that would work for a left-handed person did you see that no Sorry. bring it a bit, bring it a bit nearer your if head you, if you hold <laughs> thank you. you hold it that way up yeah. So the felt's behind it, so you can still see what you're doing, but I haven't cut the felt the right size, okay? So it's that way. And then I'm going to have to twist around and bring it that way around. Did you see uh, if that yeah. makes it better? You yes. might be, if you could get that, that idea, Gary, and maybe you can show it on your camera what I've just done. Let's so if you look. hold it so... in, your, in your right hand, yeah. felt behind, and the teeth to your right hand side yeah and, and then, then bring, it round. bring it round it's really like awkward like that yes i've got it yes have you got it yes you might be able to show so, it a bit better than me let's bring that up so i've got it in my right hand and i'm bringing it over towards my right around and down like so, so no I've you're got... bringing it you're bringing it over and down towards your left. So the like other way. The, no, the other way, Gary. Sorry. <laughs> like that. Like that. That's it. Yeah. Yes. So instead yes. of I, when I was doing it, I was going over towards my right, but you bring it this way. So you're this bringing way. it. Down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There yeah. we are. Yes. Yeah. Lisa said so she just got her mum to try, uh, like Pat said, and it makes sense for her. Um, Karen just said, when you start, Gary, are the teeth of the zip on your right hand or left hand side? Ah, if, that's you're, if, you're, left, if you're left handed, they'll be on the right hand side. And if I'm mine right handed, they're on my left hand side. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes. It's like I'm wearing my brooch now with pride. Uh, <laughs> Um, but listen, thank you everybody so much for coming along today. Um, it was great fun, wasn't it? And a lovely little mm. taster. Just to point out that when you do come on a Crafty Monkeys class and it's £25, it is a good three to three and a half hours of teaching. Uh, so it's a lot more intense than that. And we also um, have a break as well in the middle. So you always get a break of 15 minutes. And there is always a little bit of chat like you've just seen there. So I think actually, Gary, as a, as a class, that is a really good taster of a good feel of what we I do. Did, absolutely, because it was actually the, the the elements within that that bit of teaching there it was quite technical yeah. you know there was lots of different stages which if you thought of that in a, like a longer period of time on doing something else you break everything down to stages so I think all of us that teach on Crafty Monkeys have that stage right I'm going to show you we're going to stop we're going to check everyone's happy with that and then we move on to the next stage yeah. and also sometimes I mean myself personally I quite like to send uh, like a little worksheet out to you all as well so you'll download um, both sign up for the um, the class but then you'll quite often you'll get a little a download of a worksheet to go alongside to help you also and I think other tutors do that as well so yeah. it's really good you know, we try to give value for money and what we give is like that extra enrichment as well. You get extra content to just help you along the way. Yeah, everybody do make sure that you follow us on um, our social media um, pages on Facebook and Instagram because we're always, um, you know, putting things on there. And also sign up to the newsletter on our website because we send out a newsletter every week and that gives you all the classes as well that we have going on. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elaine, what's it's your cat's a, name? It was it was such easy that even the cat Claudius could have a go. <laughs> <laughs> that is the shame. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, we shall say goodbye and do the monkey wave, which actually is just a regular wave. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Keep on going. Have a great day.